building it a real mismatch of uh, audio components here. And uh, there's a bit of a story behind this. So, uh, VSI V2, uh, Bang & Olufsen 6 inch woofers, uh, which we re on this channel uh, on a live stream. And uh, these are working very well and in good nick. However, I do not have a cabinet for them. And this happens to be a Tandberg cabinet, which uh, sadly I got a couple of when I was young and dumb. And uh, as you might be able to tell, it's entirely banged up. It's, you're looking at the, it's not a side right now. It's just in terrible, awful condition. And I've just been kind of holding on to them. Uh, these cabinets kind of feeling that they're not really, not really good. Well, not really Tandberg restoration, good quality speakers anymore. However, since I have these woofers, which happen to fit these cabinets exactly perfectly, and I have dug up a couple of rather decent tweeters as well, I figured even if these speakers are never going to be uh, very beautiful, fully restored, nice Tandberg speakers anymore, we can turn them into some rather special Franken speakers and I think it's going to turn out quite great. You cannot really get any specs for the Bang & Olufsen speakers which the woofers came out of nor can you get any specs for the speakers which the tweeters came out of because the tweeters are coming out of some very anonymous uh, rather cheap German speakers which uh, they're no name speakers however they do seem to be decent quality drivers. Uh, the numbers on them, on them uh, is uh, HTL1913 with an MB logo on top and forums marking. And uh, the internet doesn't really reveal much about those at all. Uh, but I do know that uh, they sound fine. I, I really like the way they sound. Uh, however neutral they are, I can't really say. And I think they might be a decent match for you know, these woofers. Uh, however, I do not have a crossover. I do not know the crossover frequency for any of this stuff. So uh, the first thing we need to do in order to kind of uh, figure out how to build the speaker is uh, to actually measure how high these woofers are going to go. So we need to start with a spectrum analyzer. And here's our little test setup. So we've got a measurement mic uh, mounted on a tripod uh, just above the speaker cone. And uh, these speakers raced up a bit over the bench uh, just in order to prevent any reflection from below uh, affecting our measurements. Not that I think it's going to matter greatly. And uh, we're just going to start feeding some pink noise through the speaker and measure the output. And that is a very distinct frequency response and I'm very happy to see that because we've got a rather nice and flat frequency response right up to 2k or drops of like rock minus 18 dB and we've got this little artifact there who, who cares and then it's just nothing over 3k at all. So we want a quite sharp uh, crossover frequency at just about 2 kilohertz. So let's see if I can scourge up the components to make that. Ah, so I had to dig around my big box of random speakers, crossovers and other stuff and I found these two rather healthy looking and measuring uh, old crossovers. Uh, they are luxurious enough to have their specifications written on the back and uh, they seem to be performing quite well. Uh, if you look at this chart, you can see that we get a rather nice uh, 1.5k roller from the woofer, exactly as advertised, uh, despite the fact that the woofer is actually rated for 12 ohms. So, I think we'll be quite good to just use this filter as they are, except our tweeters are 4 ohm rated, so that means that we've got a much lower impedance in our tweeters than we do in our woofers. So we need to actually take a full system measurement of this and see uh, if we're going to need to dampen our tweeters by just putting a couple of power resistors in series with them because I'm I'm kind of afraid that we're going to have a massively bright speaker on our hands otherwise since we'll be pumping stupid amounts of powers into the tweeter compared to the woofer. And yes indeed, it's exactly as I feared because if you have a look at this short clip of a copyrighted song... It is quite obvious that we have an entirely ear-raping experience in this speaker, so we need to dampen down this tweet, and I'm going to take a bit of a measurement first. 
And here's a quick frequency response for the entire system. Now, this is for the internet closure, so the moment it's going to be all weird and horrid, uh, but you can see that we're seeing a giant rise in uh, amplitude as we move towards one kilohertz, and that pretty much stays high uh, until we run up, uh, up to like over 10 kilohertz. So I'm just going to snag a 10 ohm-ish resistor out of something, put in serial for the tweeter, and we'll try again. Alright, so I did some experimenting, put a 10 ohm series resistor with a tweeter, it put it uh, just a bit too low, but uh, then I just replaced the original 2.7 ohm series tweeter resistor uh, with the, the same 10 ohm resistor, and now let, let, let's, let's just uh, have it speak for itself, uh, have a listen to the new modified crossover. I think we can go with that. Alright, now I actually assemble the speaker in a pretty much final form. Uh, and uh, and uh, as you can see, it's gone together very, very well. Uh, I actually, quite miraculously, found six of the original mounts for these uh, Tandberg cabinets. So I'm going to be able to make uh, a triple mount uh, with the original mount for the woofer. These are very thick, very hard metal, so they make excellent pieces to work with. And uh, I've just uh, screwed the tweeter with three screws in the original holes uh, straight into the wood. Uh, since the tweeters have these screws protruding out of the front, uh, these actually rub somewhat against the against the side of the hole. So I have used some just a, a normal soft uh, window gasketing material to make a soft gasket, soft and airtight, uh, around the actual hole. And that just allows the tweeter to sit very softly, kind of loosely in there, but it's going to make an airtight seal. Uh, this is obviously not a super uh, high-powered speaker, so it's going to be working out quite well, I believe. However, I, I did take a measurement uh, before opening it up, and uh, we, we are seeing uh, a very, very uh, dark-sounding speaker, a very mellowed sound with the highest highs just rolling off many decibels below what uh, we'd really like to see. So, uh, I I'm very surprised to see this. I would have expected, uh, not have expected to see such a gain in efficiency in the uh, woofer from just doing that since I was uh, measuring so near field. So, uh, I'm gonna modify the crossover a bit more. I've got a couple of more 10 ohm resistors which, which I can just uh, put in parallel with the uh, of a 10 ohm resistor to pretty much uh, make the tweeter twice as loud and uh, I think that's going to uh, work a miracle on this. Well, I just installed the, the resistor and took a measurement and it's giving us this result. And uh, it, it's better, but we still are seeing a vast lack of uh, high end, which is just incredibly surprising because uh, at this stage, if I just take to the receiver, grab a gra treble knob and turn it all the way to arrive, the speaker sounds better to me and that uh, actually also gives it a bit of a more uh, flat response. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm staggered. I, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, reinstall the original resistors uh, in these crossovers because uh, we want pretty much twice as much uh, more sound coming into the tweet as we've got now. But I'm honestly surprised. I I did not expect this. But hey, I I'm a novice when it comes to speaker design. You'll when you learn. All right. So with the crossover modified, it we're pretty much ready to bolt this thing right back together. Uh, so uh, I actually did find out that I had got the polarity wrong on the tweeter, which uh, uh, I'm thinking is going to fix some of that weird dropout we saw on the 2 3 kilohertz area. Anyway, here's a final look inside uh, prior to putting all the uh, stuffing in. So I have modified the speaker for a free uh, screw main. These are rather sturdy. I replaced them with some more modern uh, self-tapping screws and there. I don't think this is going to be going anywhere. Well, we have this very nice uh, thick uh, foam surround uh, on the woofer as well, which is uh, going to serve quite well. And I've tightened the tweeter down properly. It has some play in if you really mangle it a bit, but I think it's going to uh, do just fine. Uh, something I am kind of concerned about is uh, that uh, this cabinet is kind of cracking along the seams on the outside here, so I'm not really sure what to do about that. It's you can't really access it to actually get any glue in there since you've got these uh, 
uh, well, very nice rugged support there, but they've clearly not been enough, so I'm thinking I'll just splatter some glue all over. And we also have this uh, one broken uh, contact here. This isn't sitting very well in the wood at all, so I'm going to put some glue, just normal wood glue, around that and uh, have it uh, dry over time. Yeah, that's uh, speaking number one. All the stuff after that is to just uh, do the entire speaker too. And here you can see how I've uh, glued the uh, corners of a box. Uh, just in order to give it a bit extra rigidity, I used just use the leftover glue from the refirming process since uh, that's just normal wood glue. And I stuck some uh, just a uh, paper towel on that uh, in order to stop it from making an absolute mess of all the uh, damping material which is going to go into this enclosure in, in just a moment. But I think that's going to not be a perfect repair, but uh, it's going to it's going to help. It's going to help a lot. It's going to create a gasket around that and kind of keep everything together, uh, if only slightly. All right, and here's uh, the insides of speaker number Zwei. Uh, this one also has uh, a fair amount of issue with the cabinet just kind of falling apart in the seam so it's going to receive the same glue treatment uh, it has an issue where uh, these uh, back panel mains are uh, not really attached anymore so I'm going to glue those in place uh, and here you can see my little tweeter gasket made out of the window stuffing material uh, this compresses excellently I just put together the other speaker and did a very quick uh, uh, low frequency uh, playback on it uh, at rather high excursion of a woofer and this bo uh, that box is absolutely airtight, it's excellent, no leakage anywhere. And I just figured I'd show you how very well these woofers go in because it's very satisfying to watch, uh, almost as satisfying as the excellent woodwork you've got going on here. This is just precision stuff. This is actually all one single piece of, I'm not sure if it's uh, plywood or if it's actual a proper wood. Uh, I'm not good enough to spot that. Probably plywood, but they've rated out even little slots here for the surround of the speaker and this lovely grill on this uh, enclosures. And this is just uh, uh, where the metal, uh, dark metal stripe across the front goes. Let's say speaker going in. So we have this very wide foam edge on these. And just look at how beautiful that match is. I mean, oh, it's pornographic. The feeling of doing it's, it's just in there so tight. It's, oh, I could do that all day. Uh, and uh, once you've got the woofer mounted, uh, you actually need to mount the woofer first and then the tweeter because the tweeter will actually overlap the woofer ever so slightly in order to be centered in the hole like so and uh, I've just uh, used a uh, hand drill one of these to drill uh, three holes for the tweeter there uh, the original tweeters mounted on the eight side of a cabinet you'd have to rip the metal uh, stripe off in order to get at them which is very ugly uh, and I also use this thing to uh, move the holes for the woofer mount uh, just to, in order to better optimize it for the three piece mounting we're doing and they're going to go on like so pretty much you can't really go too close uh, to the edge because you have this ledge here which really makes it rather impossible to actually get a screwdriver in there to tighten it down properly but uh, yeah, we can manage uh, get it good enough and I think this is going to be another excellent speaker so I'm just going to make this thing. And there we go. Everything glued and mounted and ready to go. So I had to use a bit more glue on this one because uh, even though the actual cabinet is in a slightly better condition, uh, it's actually falling apart more. Uh, so I've just uh, kind of reinforced everything. I did the same uh, paper towel trick to just uh, clean everything up and uh, prevent it from sticking to the uh, dampening material. And uh, I've also shoved some glue in there since uh, this part is kind of coming off a bit i don't have any staples long enough to go through that and i don't want to risk uh, screwing or uh, just pulling nails through it so i'm hoping the glue and the fact that it's actually bolted to the rear plate uh, is going to keep that in place and make an airtight seal i think it's going to make an airtight seal because the glue is just all in there and it's looking pretty nice so 
Also, I should just put it together and uh, then take uh, that one back apart and uh, uh, swap the polarity on the tweeter because uh, I actually verified that uh, I'd uh, done a major mistake uh, in uh, worrying the tweeters up because uh, I'd marked the polarity, uh, well, 180 degrees wrong. So we were seeing a giant uh, fall at a range of 1.5 kilohertz, and that goes away if I swap the polarity on that. So we're almost done. All right, and here are the uh, finished speakers. And uh, well, they're ready to go really, but uh, since this is uh, uh, the FF Cossack channel, we are of course not entirely done yet uh, because I've rigged up uh, to measure these guys in near field, so even though we don't have a real anechoic chamber, uh, we're going to get some reasonable measurements out of these guys. So, measurements marks mounted straight in line with a tweeter, pretty much on axis with everything, and uh, I've also brought out an equalizer to see uh, if we can get to the frequency. The, uh, some kind of flat uh, frequency response out of these guys. Uh, I can tell you right off the bat, uh, the, the tweeters are kind of not very good at all, actually. Uh, I've been listening to, to these speakers over the night, and yeah, they, they don't really sound <laughs> all that great. Uh, the mid range and uh, low end is uh, excellent. Everything the Bang and Olufsen Woof is doing is coming out great, and I think our measurements are going to show just that because I'm going to measure some uh, THD in the low end as well just to shove a microphone right up against the woofer 8 bit here and uh, we're going to be able to get some pretty clean signals down to pretty low frequencies I think. Uh, but let's just start off with some frequency response stuff and see how these guys actually perform. Uh, spoiler alert, there's going to be very poor treble response. <laughs> All right, and we're now measuring one third octave uh, frequency response out of this tweet, uh, speaker rather near field. I, I hope you can hear me. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we have got a super giant uh, notch at 8 kilohertz and another one at like 2.3 kilohertz or something. Yeah, that's 2.5 kilohertz. And uh, now we're going to be picking up my speaking here. Uh, well, that's not right. So let's just uh, turn on the preset equalizer setting I've uh, configured for this thing off camera. Uh, that's cleaned it up uh, quite a bit. We're pretty much within 10 decibels on everything now. There must be a bit of room for improvement uh, at around 125 250 hertz. Let's just fiddle with the knobs. And there we go, that's uh, pretty much as good as I think we're going to get it, so uh, we, with this uh, cheap equalizer there's nothing I can do about this giant peak at 2.5 kilohertz, uh, but uh, if we disregard that, uh, all the other bands seem to be at about uh, minus 5, minus 6 decibels, and uh, we're pretty much within 10 decibels from, uh, what's the lowest, uh, about 40 hertz to 16 kilohertz. Uh, disregarding that giant retarded notch there. Uh, that's not uh, too bad. Uh, however, uh, if we have a look at the actual equalizer curve, uh, it's a bit silly. So this is the actual equalizer curve we've arrived at to get a decent frequency response out of this tweet. And as you can see, it's all over the place. We've got plus 12 decibels at 30 and 50 hertz uh, just to compensate for the low end. Now this isn't a huge deal because these are not ported speakers and uh, really as long as you're not uh, hunting for extreme loudness you can pretty much gain off the low end as much as you want. It's, as long as it's decent quality speakers you're not going to have any huge issues because of that. It's not going to be incredibly distorted or just uh, huffing air through your port so that, that, that's not a huge deal. And uh, in the mid-range you know we're plus minus a couple of decibels, this is just fine. But then this is roughly our crossover point, and then we've got what? Minus four on 2K, plus uh, four on 4K, minus uh, eight or something on 8K, and just maxed out 16K, because that's pretty much out of the range for this tweeter. So, yeah, we, we've obviously got a decent enclosure, a decent woofer, and just a shit tweeter in these cabinets, which is a bit of a shame, really. I uh, had higher hopes for these tweeters, but uh, clearly they're pretty much just cheap crap out of a cheap crap speaker. But yeah, it works. 
And a really high fidelity isn't really the goal of these speakers. The goal of these speakers is to take a heap of random crap I had lying around and had pretty much given up on and turning it into something useful. And the use case scenario for these speakers is I want something to just kind of shove away in a corner and uh, play ambient music in a room. That, that, that's roughly what I want to use them for, especially down here in the workshop. So frequency response isn't quite super critical. Even though, of course, a flat response is better and this is just terrible. But uh, I'm not I'm not too upset about it because I, I haven't been trying to design a studio monitor. That was never my intention. I knew that wasn't going to happen with these parts. Even though well, our, our low end is uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, but anyway, let's disable the equalizer and do some distortion measurements uh, on the low end because I'm really curious about that because these speakers sound uh, very clean to my ears even if I just gain up the low end way out of the actual natural frequency range and uh, I've, I, I'm thinking we're going to see some pretty decent results uh, THD at uh, I'm, I'm going to place about THD at 30 hertz at less than 15 percent so let's see and here's our testing setup for the uh, THD tests. Super duper mega near field, we're right up against the center of the woofer and that's because else we're going to get huge room distortion so we're going to have to do this at a rather low level but uh, since, since uh, the speakers have such poor uh, low end performance we're still going to see uh, quite a bit of excursion on the cone so we're going to be pushing the, uh, pushing the test speaker quite hard during this test I think and uh, of course the equalizer is going to be disabled. So let's, let's get to it. Alright, so I've uh, reconfigured the software for uh, measuring uh, performance. We've got our performance figures at, up here. We're mostly going to be looking at the THD, uh, which is uh, the biggest uh, distortion produce in speaker for low end. And we've got our spectrum here, which is pretty much just going to show one giant peak. So let's start out easy at uh, 100 hertz. And we've got 0.62% THD at uh, 100 hertz, which is uh, actually very good. That is a very good result. So let's uh, move now to 50. And we've got 1.55% THD at 50 hertz, and you can see how uh, just my voice uh, is uh, affecting the measurement since we're doing it with a mic. But uh, let's go down to 30 hertz. And while we are seeing a drastic drop in uh, loudness, uh, we still have only about 7.5% of distortion, which is uh, really rather impressive uh, for a speaker this size. So let's go down to 15 hertz. And uh, that's drop of the loudness so low that we were not picking it up anymore. So let's just uh, do 30 hertz again at a more reasonable loudness where I can actually hear it with my ears. And let's just turn the volume up until we feel that the speakers are starting to distort. Uh, we're just going about 10% there, but uh, this is, I can feel that there's some rather considerable excursion in that speaker right now. Oh, this one's actually got some minor air leakage, if you listen closely. Still though, we are pushing this at a very high volume at 30Hz and we're still only seeing about 16% distortion. In fact, I just had a look at that speaker and we're pretty much just pushing it to the edge of its uh, suspension capability. It's pretty much bottoming, bottoming out, but fine, due to the fact that it's a quality speaker, it's uh, limited by the suspension rather than hitting the voice call in the magnet. So we're seeing about 15% distortion at 30 hertz at the maximum th uh, maximum volume this speaker can produce. And while well, it's not a great volume, I think that's a very good result. And that just speaks for the quality of the driver and the cabinet uh, damping ability as well. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, that means I can happily use my equalizer to just boost up those low frequencies and not feel guilty about just in introducing stupid amounts of distortion into the signal. Sweet. And I just had a listen around the speaker and uh, it's very obvious that the air leak is down there in the corner. And actually uh, there's a bit of leakage going on all around the edge of this uh, rear plate but 
it's rather minimal so I'm not going to care about it because uh, the, these screws are so worn out that I, I don't find it justified to take this thing back apart. And if you're curious as to the original part number of these beakers, well they are Tandberg Hi-Fi System 20s, uh, which had now been dubbed the Cossag 1 and the Cossag 2. And with that, I think I'm just going to leave you. So, thank you for watching. If you like the channel, I urge you to like the video because sadly YouTube forces me to shell that, else no one watches me. And cheerio. <laughs>